Uh, this is the damage from a box truck backing into us. And then you're going to see here how we're going to go through and fix everything in this. This line. So the whole thing seems to have been shifted. Here we are, 2019 Subaru Outback. Uh, this is the one that had a little damage done to the front end from somebody backing into it. What we're going to end up doing is putting this vanguard bull bar on so i got it in i've already just kind of mocked up some of the brackets and stuff um, here is the directions you get with this it's literally these two pages this one with inventory which some of the stuff here isn't on the sheet and some of the stuff that says it's there is not there and then here's your directions it's literally one page it shows you all these numbers to put together to put it on and it's kind of funny because they don't even show this main bracket piece on there so kind of figure it out for yourself i'm sure not everybody has one of these pits but if you do have a pit it makes it much easier so you can literally just step down in to get underneath the vehicle this is great for lots of maintenance on vehicles but you could do this on car ramps too you just have to put the car up so you can get underneath here so now we're going to try to figure out how this goes and we're going to have to get it spaced out and see i think it's going to hook to these but we'll have to go from there and trial and error. All right, I got this just laying across the opening for right now, getting it kind of lined up. And it does look like those are gonna be where the brackets go to. Because you can see where this hangs. All right, as I was saying, it looks like this is gonna be going up here. And then this bracket is gonna go around to that and bolt them together. But from the looks of it, I gotta make sure this is as far this way as possible. Because it looks like it's gonna be a tight fit. Which is okay, because I do want it close to the bumper. And I'm not sure where this other bracket they had here goes to, but we'll see what I can come up with. Be right back. All right, no matter how tight we get this on there, this, will not reach to this bracket. So somehow this is not long enough. So we're gonna back up and try something else. I already started removing some of the pins to hold the dust shield on underneath, but I realized there are so many of them that I don't wanna remember, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to remember where all these go. So I stopped and I went and got my marker pen. So I'm gonna actually put a piece of marking on each one so that way you remember where each of these go. You can see here just how many fasteners there was. These three are actually bolted up into the subframe across, you know, holding it. These, I only managed to break three. So that's not bad, only breaking three out of this many. So now that it's off, you can kind of get an under view of what it looks like. And I don't see any oil leaks or anything, so that's good. So, all right, back to finding the spot to be able to bolt that on then. All right, not sure how good this is gonna show. I'm trying to find a good angle for this, but I've been trying to figure out you know, how to get a measurement. And you can see if I put two bolts through, which is what it's gonna need, and you try to put this crack it, they don't line up. There's no way to fit them in there. Let me see if I can change this a little bit. So you can see these are not gonna line up with this anyway. So I'm gonna have to end up drilling and modifying these brackets to begin with, so. All right, keep trying to figure it out, trying to get a measurement so I can know where I can look on underneath the car, but yeah. See, I got it suspended, you know, basically somewhat in place where I would like it. And these, I was trying to see about getting them bolted up here because you can see where the motor mounts are because these other brackets, they're just too far back. There's no way it's gonna reach that one or back to that one. So now we're looking at trying to basically come across on the cross member, which means I'm gonna to have to cut the dust shield, which I have laying here, but I'm willing to do that. I think I came up with a plan here. I took their bracket, bolted it this way instead of the way they wanted it. And you can see I removed the one here that actually holds the, you know, goes out holds the body work on. But I'm gonna to have to bend this bracket. Once that comes down, then I should be able to get this 
and I can actually drill that out and bolt those together. But I wanna make sure I have the stability so it doesn't wanna bow down the front. So what I was looking at is actually not this one, but I gotta get another bracket. I'm gonna go from this bolt over to the frame itself, to that bracket to hold everything. I think that's gonna work pretty well. You can see this bracket here. I gotta bend this one yet, but you can see how it goes up in there. So actually I already did the one on this side. So you can see the bracket here and it's actually coming out flush, staying even. So that way, hopefully I can get this bolted up to that. Then I just gotta put another bracket from here over to this one to hold it so that way it doesn't wanna tip in the front. So let me go ahead back and I'm gonna go bend this one and I'll be back. See, you got bracket number two up here now. Got the one on this side and the one over here. This one, I guess I bent a little too much, but I'll be able to straighten that out when I get my plate coming across here. Okay, I got everything on here loosely fitted. Just on that one bracket, I don't have the one coming across yet because I was trying to see maybe put it in a different direction. But we'll see about that side. And this side is the same, but you can see it is a lot of weight hanging down in the front. But it's kind of there, but I just got to get this a little bit better so I don't like that flopping. So we got to come up with another brackets to strengthen the sides here. Came up with this bracket here, bolted to, you know, the actual cross member here. So that way this, yeah, this bolt is at an angle, but this is basically just to hold this up. And I got another one on this side. Um, right now, everything's just kind of loose. You know, I don't have everything tightened down because what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure everything's gonna fit, then it's gonna get taken apart. And I'm actually gonna put Loctite on the bolts and put it back in. So right now it's just kind of testing to see how stable everything is gonna be. But I'll be back in a little bit. I'm glad you're still with me at this point because I actually went back and redid the whole thing. So you can see I still have it in the same point here, but now I got it coming out the side and I actually figured out a way to bolt this up here. So this, what I ended up doing was drilling a little hole in the back and then using those toggle bolts that they supplied with it. So in there, I have one of these toggle bolts. So it has that welded onto it. So basically I slide it in and then bolt this on. And now that's giving me a nice strong thing here where I'm moving a whole car. And I have put some uh, thread sealant on that one and here and over here and actually every bolt I've taken off I've went back and actually used the red thread sealant. So now we're going to start on this side. I got to drill my hole up here first but I got to mark it. Okay I got my piece put together here and I got this up so now what I need to do is actually mark. So what I do is take my drill bit and actually scratch it up pretty good in there that way I have a line I know where I'm cutting. So I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it right there. Okay, you can see, got the hole drilled and toggle bolt is in. Now I just gotta put my piece up and then get that bracket bent over towards that. All right, what I was doing, I was using the nut to bend this, to bend this bracket in. So now I can move this off, put my washer, and then put the Loctite on there and then center down. But just doing that to help get it bent. Okay, now you can see that I got the one on here lock nutted and I got another one, second one on there. Basically they're torqued together so that way they won't loosen up and I do have the Loctite underneath. Um, now I just gotta get my paint touch up around here so that way I make sure I don't get any rust in that hole or over here, but I just gotta go get the paint for that. All right, you can see it's all painted. All the bare metal has been covered on that side and on this side. Now we gotta go back to getting the bumper mounted. All right, went ahead and reinstalled basically the splash guards on both sides. Doing this method, I'm not gonna have to modify them at all. I am gonna have to probably cut this a little bit to get around some of these brackets because it's not gonna be covering there. But we'll get to that after I get the the actual bar put on. Okay, this is the louver assembly. Actually, I removed the grill piece here. So that way I can get in here and I got the light set up. 
because over here in this corner, this was knocked loose and the little mounting studs were broken off. Because this is the bracket that used to go underneath there. So now I gotta refasten that and then pull that back into shape. Got the louver assembly fixed here. Now I wanna find another mounting bracket up underneath here for the bar so it doesn't move. And we'll just put it through. I'll put this cover back on afterwards. All right, I didn't show it, but I actually got these other brace right here on now. And I actually took a lot. I got one on each side. I took a lot of the wobble out. Let me step back here and I'll show you. So that's as much wobble as I have now. I can, I can live with that. All right, dust shield is back on. Did have to trim out a little bit in each corner in the front here. And then the side part here, basically I had to cut that and I bent it out to go around the bracket I have. Let's see if I can get around here and show you what I ended up doing. So you can see it up there. I'll show you the other side. Looks the same here. And up in there. So you can see how I got this just out over it. And these used to bolt to the side of this, but they don't anymore. But you can see they're up in there pretty firm now because they're squeezed up against the pieces up in here. And they do have their own clips around. Yeah, and the hardest clips to get, which I almost forgot about, but thankfully I had extra clips. That's how I remembered, was if you come all the way back here, next to your where your tire is, you get the tire here, and you come up here, you'll see there's a clip up here that's kind of hidden out of the way. There's one on this side and one on the passenger side. A couple of clips left over. These are the ones that held the uh, little splash guard from the fender well to the splash guard on the underside. Or to make it a little easier, the ones that held this part over to this part. 